we started in the fall of 08, and you know the students didn't really know what to expect of us. They were kind of sizing us up, and, and we didn't really know what to expect of them. So there was definitely a, a getting to know you phase. As we extend the right leg, you can go as low as you want to the squat, or you can stay up high. Yeah, exactly. And then we're gonna take it to center. We'll take it to the other side. So come on to the so other side. You know, at the high school level, uh, students are changing dramatically. They're changing emotionally and physically, and, and they're coming to a place where at the end of their four years, they're leaving um, what they know is their home, what they know is their school community, and their, their, their actual community that they live in. Um, some of the things that we see with high schoolers, and it's uh, becoming more and more common, is high levels of stress, you know, questionings of, questioning of who they are. Um, doubting who they are you know we can provide for our kids you know a great academic program but if we're losing the kids to stress and anxiety um, and their inability to self-soothe themselves in some ways that are leading to their decision making that's not in their best interest it doesn't matter how strong the school is and how uh, strong the academic program is and I think that what we've learned as a community this year is that you know, thinking with our heads is a great thing, but we also need to think with our emotions and with our bodies. So this whole project started um, with a conversation between Luke Bloom and I. Luke is a phys ed teacher over at Monument Mountain, and during the summer he would work over at Kripalu. So he and I were leading a hike together, and we just started to talk about how amazing it would be if we could teach yoga over at the high school. So we met with uh, Karpala Yoga at, at their center here and um, spoke with uh, Garrett Sarley and Stephen Cope and talked about what we imagined, the school imagined, yoga could do for um, our kids and our community. And they were very excited about what they could do in terms of helping us with that. The Institute for Extraordinary Living began its work back in 2005 with a pilot project with Tanglewood Music Center. As luck would have it, the campus of the Boston Symphony Orchestra is right across the street from the Kripalu campus. And every summer, about 150 of the top young musicians in the world arrive across the street at Tanglewood to study with the likes of the great James Levine, Yo-Yo Ma, Phyllis Curtin. For years, I've wondered what it would be like to add a curriculum of yoga and meditation into the ongoing curriculum of music that these young students have. What effect would it have on their performance, I wondered, on the inevitable large amounts of anxiety that they encounter as musicians? Well, we did create this program, and in the process we teamed up with a great team of scientists from Harvard Medical School to examine the results, the effects that we got over time. Well, my name is Satbir Khalsa and I am an assistant professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And I'm part of a team of three um, Harvard faculty researchers who work with the Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health. And we are each involved in a number of different studies evaluating the benefits of yoga uh, in different populations and in different conditions. Our study showed, and this surprised even me, that in just a mere eight weeks we had significant attenuation of performance anxiety, we had improvements in mood, improvements in concentration, and the cultivation of what we call optimal performing states, or sometimes called flow states. The research component is necessary because in order to really validate whether these things uh, can be implemented into the schools and do have their benefits is to actually conduct the research in a very sort of formalized manner using validated surveys and instruments to show that indeed we are seeing the changes that we anticipate um, with the positive benefits of yoga practice. From that small start with Tanglewood, we've expanded our research into a number of areas, looking at the whole spectrum from difficult pathological states like anxiety and depression, physical illness, all the way to the development of those optimal states, flow states, and even transcendent states. But it's not just an issue of fixing things that are bad. It's an also an issue of positive psychology, of promoting quality of life, uh, promoting positive uh, psychological characteristics, and actually enhancing performance, and that includes school performance as well. A couple of years ago, we became interested in yoga's effects on a normal group of high school students. 
how might yoga affect the kinds of anxieties that high school students really have to face these days? Test anxieties. The anxieties involved in developing much more complex social roles. We were very lucky to find right in our own neighborhood a visionary high school, Monument Mountain High School, that was interested in collaborating with us on this kind of program. And we're also very excited about the research component. With this yoga program, it opened it up for everybody. So we had really kind of super athletic kids next to kids that sometimes um, like to do more non-traditional activities. So it was really kind of cool to see uh, everybody included and everybody doing, uh, doing the yoga practice together. Our school from the yoga program, I think, if anything, got closer. Because uh, I know all my classmates who are in the yoga program, even in the other classes who I don't have the same gym class with, we could all still talk about it, we could all reflect, and we could all come relate to each other about our experiences within the program, what we were doing, and just talking about it afterwards. And it was all just really a good time with each other. Got to meet some new people too. Last one. Take the arms wide, straighten the legs, and step or hop the feet together. Whatever. It was just so nice to like have that like time for you, like no homework that you had to worry about. Yeah. Especially like in tests and things when I had just done yoga, I kind of came into the classroom not worried and like, oh yes, I'm gonna ace this. Or something <laughs> yeah. Like that. And for me, sports, I felt way more like aligned and just like. I don't even know how to explain it. Just like better, like loose. Yeah. So we've gotten really good feedback from the students um, of how they've been able to, you know, find practical applications for the, the skills that they're learning in their yoga classes. Um, one of the students, she's a championship swimmer, and she told me that using the breathing techniques that she's learned in class, she's applied them to her swimming, and that her swimming strokes have improved, her times have improved. She also said that she used yogic breathing during her SATs, and that it really helped her to ground and focus. Um, and in fact, a lot of students have said that they do use the breathing techniques outside of class. Well, in the beginning of the year, I was going through a lot of stress, and I feel that instead of like freaking out about it and stuff, which I was what I was planning on doing, having yoga in school really helped. Like, again, it helped level me out. Like I had to juggle between football and schoolwork and everything, and it just was really hard some days, and just doing yoga just helped a lot. I find myself concentrating on my breath a lot more, which has given me the room to relax and um, enjoy enjoy classes and be able to be present in classes that I hadn't been before. So that was very exciting. So from the students, one of the main things that was commented on, the feedback that I got, was the importance of the relaxation at the end of the classes. Each class had five minutes of relaxation at the end. The students really noticed a difference. In, in general, the days that they had the yoga, I think teenagers, there's a lot of stress in their lives and don't often find themselves where they can really come into a place of relaxation. There's also that sense as they left the, the room that they felt calmer and that they had more energy to carry themselves through the rest of the day into their sports, into the evening. So one thing about the room that we practiced the yoga is that last year it was the detention room in the school. And also that whole area of the school, we were told that kids used to hang out sort of in the darker corners of that wing. The counselor of the school has mentioned that just energetically that whole area is very different and the room itself, the students took such ownership over it and painted the room, they painted a beautiful mural with lots of colors and yoga postures on there, really wanting to create a space for them to do their yoga practice. Kids also feel very, very much cared for in the yoga classes, so they'll say things like, um, you know, like the teachers are their mothers. I mean, it's very caring, they feel very safe in that room, they feel uh, very expressive in that room and what they're doing is taking yoga classes. We've seen that the kids grades have gone up you know so those are f those are pretty dramatic you know impacts in terms of the kids and their ability to to look at internalize the yoga in, in a way that they're able to use it themselves as some basic skills to sleep 
to lessen anxiety, to work better with their peers and also with their parents and also with their teachers. It's in terms of my meeting with kids, um, it, the kids who are taking the yoga program, I will say to them, well, you know, you came into this school year feeling very anxious because your parents were just divorcing, you were anxious because you didn't know where you were going to go to college, you said that you were not good enough, all of those things, you know, and how are you feeling now? And they'll come out with statements with that are very much related to the yoga class. So I've learned how to breathe so that I can get myself through the day. You know, I learned how to, you know, listen to the conflict between my parents and not make it my conflict or be able to deal with their conflict so that it's not me that's always at fault in my head. Now those are dramatic things for the kids to say. Um, and it's very hard for this age group to kind of sort of unwrap themselves from all the other things that are going on. And I do strongly believe, and we've seen it again and again, that the yoga has really helped them with that. You've seen pictures of that wonderful, dedicated yoga room now that they have at Monument Mountain High School. And we're very anxious to begin our second year with Monument Mountain and to see that room come alive again with more in-depth testing, with more in-depth classes, and this time with work in addition to the students' work with the faculty and the administration.